Hi, in this problem we have a set, and it's the set containing the elements 1 and negative 1. And the question is to determine if it's a group under the operation of multiplication. So it says, is this set under the operation of multiplication a group? So the answer is yes, and we're just going to go through and just briefly explain um, why each of the conditions required for it to be a group is valid. So the first thing we want to check is to see if multiplication is a binary operation on this set. So I'm going to call this G. And so now we're just going to check. So basically we're going to check every single product. So 1 times 1 is equal to 1, which is in G. And then we also have um, negative 1 times negative 1, that's equal to 1, which is in G. And then we have 1 times negative 1, which is negative 1, which is in G. And last but not least, we have negative 1 times 1, which is negative 1, which is in G. Those are all the possible products. And so, therefore, multiplication is a binary operation on this group. So dot is a binary operation on this group. Recall that a group is a set which has a binary operation which is associative, it has an identity element, and every element has an inverse. Note that the set is non-empty and that is guaranteed by the existence of the identity. All right, so now let's go ahead and check another condition. Let's check associativity. And basically, the multiplication is associative because it's just the usual multiplication of real numbers. So I'll just say multiplication is associative because it is the usual multiplication of real numbers. which is associative, right? So the multiplication of real numbers is associative. That's all we have here, so there's no issues. Three, we need an identity element. So one is going to be um, the identity element. So here, E equals one, since it's pretty easy to see for all X in G, we have X times one equals X, which is equal to one times X, and that's a trivial, right? 1 times 1 is 1, um, negative 1 times 1 is negative 1, and you know, you can, it's commutative, so everything is good. There's no issues here, very, very clear. Four, um, inverses. We have to show that every element has an inverse, and in this group, or this set, um, basically every element is going to be its own inverse. So for all x and g, so for every x and g, its inverse is x since x times x is equal to 1, which is the identity, and that's equal to x times x. So basically, um, we have for all x in g, x squared is equal to 1. That's what we have here. So every element is its own inverse. And very easy to check this as well. Um, you know, if you take 1, 1 times 1 is 1. If you take negative 1, uh, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. I mean, we can check 1 times 1 is 1. That takes care of the element 1. And then um, negative 1 times negative 1 is 1. That takes care of the element negative 1. And you could, be, you could do this if you really wanted to be pedantic. I mean, let me just clean that up. Going a little too fast. Right, just to clearly satisfy this definition here, but it's pretty clear. So everything here is satisfied, so the answer is yes. So it's just a yes or no question. It's not really asking us to prove it, but we pretty much did, right? We're pretty thorough here in the explanation, hopefully. So whenever you have a, a set and you're asked to see if it's a group, you basically just go through and check all the criteria. You have to check if it's a binary operation, if multiplication is associative, um, the existence of an identity, and every element has to have an inverse. In this case, everything was satisfied, and so all was good. Good luck.